All right, after a quick discussion with Melissa, this is what we decided we're gonna set aside. All these little bits and bobs. Should be some quick, easy projects. So, if we stick to it, you will see these in a video looking completely, completely different. Remember last weekend, I said we were gonna go through this storage unit? Well, that day we filled up the back of the van with as many boxes as we could and this is us starting to go through them. Here we are. Looking at all the oogly mooglies. And then here's a neat idea. There's a little flat cake van. It's got the little slidey thing on here. Keep your, keep your cake warm, keep your casserole warm. If you make a lasagna in there, keep it warm. It's a nice little thing. Not sure. I see it being useful in a lot of ways. And being the hoarder that I am, I think I'm going to keep it. Look at that. If that isn't screaming the 70s, I don't know what is screaming. I mean, it's, you can hear it, can't you? It's, hello, it's the 70s. Get down on it. I'm telling you, I hear it, I hear it. Oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. Oh man, for all those people who are waiting for salt wash, I didn't have any in stock. Apparently it was buried in our storage. Oh, Melissa will be happy to see that. She likes these things. Sure, that'll go back into the store and uh, get sold. Ah, our coffee mug box. Been wanting to take these ones to market. Got a nice little setup for coffee mugs, but then we never bring them. Oh, I guess they're not all coffee mugs. I don't even, I don't even know what that is. It's nice and round though. Ooh, I can make it big eyes on something. Do I have more? That is the question at hand. Oh yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking eyeballs. I want to get into that goofy, fun, silly stuff. And I don't know what these are for, but I like them. Another eyeball. Woo, that's a good, pretty color. Chartreuse. Making a mess. If I leave this here tomorrow, John Boys don't kill me. You know, I've been through all of my market stuff several times when I got it. Never knowing what to do with it. Dessert plates. You know, all china. Nobody ever uses them. They're always mismatched. My cats eat off of these things. Now, this is not one of the higher end chinas that a school of little fur balls get, but it's pretty and I think they'll appreciate it. So I think things like this I'm gonna bring home so I have more dishes to fill with cat food. Well, yeah, this is our bird feeders. I have coffee cups for them, bird feeders. Whoa! Now that is a drink. Chocolate martinis. Anybody? You like a chocolate martini? I like a chocolate martini. Oh, yeah. All right. We'll save that one over here. Ah, there we go. Now, how many of y'all Pinterest folks have seen them where they glue that on there? And you put your little bird seed on there and you can hang it on the tree? That's it. That's what I'm making right there. See? It's got a purpose. Ah, there we go. More plates. Add to my collection. I think I know what I'm doing tonight. Give me some blue. I'm definitely, definitely thinking a bird feeder. Now I just gotta figure that out. But I'm gonna do it. Uh, I was also thinking this to be a bird feeder, so I'm wondering maybe do they get combined? I don't know. Um, looks like somebody started painting this. And when I first looked at it, pardon me, pardon me, I was thinking, is this some vintage copper pan? And then I looked at this side, and it's definitely not a copper, and it's not iron. It's even got a weird little thing on there, so it's definitely a decorative piece. And somebody had painted it. So, guess what we're going to do? We're going to paint it. It's cute. Things like this, I mean... 
if you don't watch Julie's Design Diaries, she she makes all kinds of silly things out of stuff like this. So I'm going to try and channel my Julie and see what I can do with that one. And it finally occurred to me, this one. I believe, I believe there is a tall chrome tray or a tall chrome thing that holds those. All right, that's just what I've got going on. Remember my little basket? Ooh, ooh, that would be fun. Ooh, 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 never mind. I found this in our stash from long ago. So, got that. And then, well, this thing, which is nice and heavy. And, uh, I'm going to combine these things together and, uh, bird feeder. What do you think? Bird feeder? I'm thinking bird feeder. Um, I'm going to be trying some Gorilla Glue today. Hopefully Gorilla Glue will be my friend. Alright. I do not like playing with the camera. I don't like it. Uh, but, I'm making a video. Well, this is going to edit through it all anyway. Take the little ring thingy off of here. That. I love it. This thing is heavy. But it comes apart. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I'm thinking, like this, like this, and voila. Do we, do we think a voila? So, um, I'm going to do the pain in the butt part and glue it all up, and uh, I'll show you when we're done. I'm going to do a quick little close on. All right, so I haven't been, uh, obviously, a videoing when I glue things, but I've got the base of it gluing on there right now, which I really got to clean that up, but I'll clean that up after. Let's glue the little top on up in there. I think this, this is turning out kind of fun. Might not want to let go of it, but you know, that's me. We'll see where I take it from there. But you know, birds and squirrels should be happy. Like I said, when I was editing that video, I immediately, my brain just went mushroom. So we are gonna make this look like a mushroom. It is now Saturday and I try to get my videos done on Sunday. So I am taking some shortcuts like using spray paint. I tend to use this two-in-one, which works really well. It's out there drying and hopefully before the end of the day, before it gets too late, I will get this painted up like a mushroom. And here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design. And we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage Bee. And I have just started this month a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. There's lots of discounts. Links are in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. I'm not good at this stuff. I'm, <clears throat> I'm just not good at this stuff. I'm not good at it at all. Practice makes perfect. I'm kind of doodling up some of these pieces and parts. Uh, this is from bed posts. Uh, I've been had them painted and sanded and I'm in the process of doing the white waxing as you saw in that first one I showed you and I'll show you what we're making ta-da just little, little Christmas trees you can sit around all over the place you feel the need to put a Christmas tree somewhere you go boop there's a Christmas tree if you want to decorate it you can you go boop there's a Christmas tree you know somebody who doesn't have a Christmas tree. Boop, there's a Christmas tree. So I'm making Christmas trees. That's what I'm doing. I've got more blocks. I'm going to paint them and sand them and wax them. Just like I've been doing. Boop, there's a Christmas tree. Nice. Gonna do the red ones. Gonna do it with Plum crazy. Sugar plums, right? Sugar plums. There we go. Boom. I'm not going to have you watch me paint because you make me nervous. 
To finish these off for Sue, I added some moss to the base and now I am using some tacky spray glue because I'm gonna add glitter. These are lightly dusted and we live in Florida, so that just seems weird to me. So I am going to use this great glitter that I have from Glitter Love. It has green and red um, traditional glitter, if you will. And then it has these big fluffy snowflakes. So I am going to liberally dust these with the, um, the glitter and that will be fun, I think. There were actually three different kinds of trees here. So this is a set of a large and a medium, and I've got two sets of those. I did not glitter those. I thought they were well flocked on their own, but then I have these that are sort of half flocked is what it feels like. And we have a couple of those in the green and then several in the plum. So I think they came out charming. And while Sue is painting up some Christmas tree bases, I am gonna work on a base for the cloche that she found in the boxes. So I found this um, circular board that I had already in my stash. It was on the shelves, just waiting for a project. And I got some 20 millimeter beads and um, put those around the top. They are just glued on with some Gorilla Glue hot glue. For this, I'm using DIY Paints Little Black Dress and the DIY paintbrush, The Perfectionist. It is a good brush to use because of the pointy tip gets in between the little beads. So I wasn't intending to do any texture or anything on this, but I don't like this wood grain that I can still see. And there's a little cut mark there. And had I noticed those were so prominent before I painted it, I could have taken it to the sander outside the belt sander and I could have fixed it. But now I can't. Well, I mean, I still can, but I would just have to repaint it anyway. So I'm gonna use salt wash to fix my problem. All right, got those. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt wash into some little black dress. Mix it up so that it's pretty thick and then we're gonna ice it like it's a cake. These silicone spread pals, they come with the smaller one, which is what I'm using, and a larger one. They are perfect for so many different projects. They are the perfect little squeegee, um, and you'll see me use them on other projects as well. But I'm going to put this on, and I kind of want it to have the ridges if you see expensive cakes that are iced with sort of like a squeegee or a spatula. They have those little ridges on them, and that's what I'm looking for. I want to hide the wood grain and instead create a frosted cake look, which to me seems perfect for something that's going to go under a cloche. And since I had enough and I thought it made sense, I went ahead and did this to the top of the wood as well, not on the beads, just in that center area. And now I am going to use DIY's big top and you see, once again, I am using a French tip brush and that just gets into the beads so much better. A tip if you struggle with getting this really even is you could pour some in a bowl and add a little bit of your black paint to your big top or your top coat and that'll make sure that you don't have any white halo. I'm pretty good at getting this out so I'm not too worried about it. I've had this candlestick base in my stash for probably about two years. I bought it really liking it and then I could never decide quite what I wanted to do with it. And I think it's gonna work perfect for this project. What I didn't like was the exact patina on it. So I've picked up some DIY gilding wax in the color black. Now this is different from your typical black wax. It is made to gild um, furniture, of course, but it is made to gild hardware and things like that. So it comes out much more opaque and more dense. It's not a rub on and wipe off type black wax. This is a rub on and let it cure and it will be much darker than a typical dark wax. And here is my completed cloche stand all staged up. I love how there's still some shine in the pedestal, but it is much more dark and matching with the base that I created. I am very pleased with how this project came out. I like the icing method that I did. I think this should be a good seller. Let me know what you think. We have some of your favorite Prima products back in stock. Yay! 
and we have the new H2O transfers coming up, so be sure to check those out. We have tons of new midis as well as restock on our regular midis. We have the new DIY brushes in stock. Check those out. Some new gilding papers from Dixie Belle, which are so cool. And there is even a new yellow patina spray, perfect for your pumpkins that are coming up in a video to be shown soon. My next piece isn't from the box that Sue was going through. It's from this box that I got when I went up to Ruth and Ruby and got this stuff free off the side of the road. This little stand was um, in that box. While I was painting the top to my pedestal, I went ahead and painted this little black dress also and am sealing it with two coats of Big Top. There was a hook on the back that I took out and I also filled that actually with salt wash because I had some left over from the icing that I did on the pedestal top. Now, I don't really want to do white wax or anything like that on this. I wanna keep it very jet black, but recently I have played with this zinc gilding wax, which I actually got to play with at Ruth and Ruby and really love it. So I'm going to try to get this zinc wax in all these little nooks and crannies. And, uh, and yes, I really prefer using my fingers and I will get to that. But really all I wanna do is kind of create some dimension in these areas, not necessarily take away from the black. So I'm gonna try to put it in these little nooks and then just gently feather it out so that it stays pretty jet black, but it's just a little bit of a highlight. And I think this is gonna be better than adding white wax or even silver wax because the zinc, as you can tell, is much, much darker. And as you can see in the finished piece, it really highlights the darkness and depth of the design work in this while highlighting all those little nooks and crannies. I am loving how this zinc came out. I think it was a good choice. I would love to hear what you think about it as well. There was a lot of humidity in the air and it took a while for this spray paint to dry, but now I am going in with my favorite brush, the brush that I would tell everybody is the first one to buy if you've never invested in good brush, and that is the Klingon S30. The shorty makes it perfect, and um, this is a good brush for almost anything, but especially like chair legs. Anyway, I am going in here and I'm gonna give this three coats actually of the red. Okay, I've got the top painted. I tried to really have my brush strokes, give it some good texture so that it won't, you know, it'll have a little bit of roughness to it. And now I'm gonna use Fusion Putty, which is this nice creamy taupey color. And I'm gonna paint all of this down here once I get done with that, I'm gonna do a salt wash technique and then top coat everything before I do polka dots. And now I'm gonna use one of my favorite techniques, which is to get an old toothbrush and you either need to water down your paint or in this case, I chose to wet my paintbrush and that just makes the paint a little bit more mobile. You don't typically want it full strength and I am just flicking my toothbrush to get the paint onto the mushroom. In this case, what I'm looking for are little black dots to appear, and I'm gonna do this on the base and the top, and um, this will just make it look a little bit more natural, a little less pristine. For those of you who know me, you probably think, wow, this is awfully bright white. Well, we're gonna change all that. I'm gonna use DI the DIY brush, the little dipper, and I'm putting that into Fusion's Antiquing Glaze. Now, everything on here has at least two coats of DIY's Big Top, except for that stem area, which has three coats of Fusion, some of it with some salt wash mixed in. But the, um, the Fusion Glaze here is, you don't have to put anything over it. It effectively is also a top coat, but you generally want a top coat before you use it. Um, and it's just gonna give you a really soft antiquing look. It is gonna be a lot lighter than wax. So sometimes when people don't like the look of wax, feel it's too heavy, this is a good option. It will create a much softer antique look without the harsh darkness or dirtiness, the grunginess of a dark wax 
or something like a decrepit dust. And to show off our final projects of the day, we photographed Sue's bird feeders that she made from the cups and saucers that she found in the boxes. This is outside of our office space. And of course, her mushroom fully painted up and loaded and ready to go with some bird seed. We did bring these right back inside, but we wanted to showcase what they would look like as they were used. I think they are so charming and I think Sue did a great job. Let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe. We try to post videos every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.